today I made a game with only scratch count, let's get started. First I made a simple little movement script, and I also added some very basic enemies. But wait a minute, if I can only use the default scratch count, how did I manage to change its appearance? Well you see, this challenge is effectively made possible thanks to the effect blocks. These blocks allow you to control the brightness, color, transparency, as well as a few other effects too. So to get this dark green color, all I had to do was apply a color effect, as well as a negative brightness. And since everything still looks quite bland, let's add a walking animation. Now that the player as well as the enemies look a lot more lively, I think it's time to add an attack. And as you can see, this is just a simple projectile script, but I also did the same trick as before and applied a few effects. This time was the fisheye and pixelate effect, to make scratch out look like whatever this thing is. Now that we have the very basics finished, Let's also add a little shell to the player to make Scratch Cat's movement look even more dynamic. Speaking of dynamicness, I made a moving camera that follows the player instead of just staying still, which I think instantly makes the perceived quality a lot higher for not a lot of work at all. But this also created a few issues. First, when an enemy is supposed to be out of our view, it's actually still showing and appears to be stuck at the edge because Scratch doesn't let sprites go off screen. Though we can easily fix this by hiding the enemy if its intended position is not its actual screen position. This effectively detects if Scratch is limiting its position, and if it is, the enemy must be off screen. But wait, there's another problem. If you move far away enough, no enemies seem to spawn correctly. Luckily, this is also an easy fix. We just have to spawn the enemy around the player by adding the player's position to the random offset. Now it's just time to add some sense of progression by adding a score counter. Let's also add a health bar which will actually allow the game to end when you run out of hearts. Banning these two things alone will not be enough for fun progression, as the gameplay at the start and the end are literally the exact same which will become very boring very quickly. To combat this, we can add more variety to the types of enemies that spawn. So here you can see a small boss, and this guy will spawn from time to time, adding some variety. Not only can we add more types of enemies, we can also make the base enemy spawn more and more as the round progresses which will add a difficulty curve. And it turns out I accidentally forgot to fully code in the health system because right now the player doesn't take any damage. Let's fix that real quick, and this looks much better. But going back to where we were, let's add another boss type. This large boss takes quite a lot of hits to take down, but once you do, it gives you a wealth of points. And since we've upgraded the enemies so much already, I think it's only fair that we give the player some upgrades too. So here you can see some of the upgrades that the player can unlock when they collect the upgrade point, like these four regenerating rock things, which again are just really pixelated scratch cats, or the super large boulder that constantly destroys enemies. I also added some other upgrades that you can get from the upgrade coin, and now you can even get hearts for them too. Let's try these overpowered upgrades out. Apparently, even all of these extremely powerful upgrades are not enough to survive against the sheer amount of enemies. So I made some tweaks to reduce the amount of enemies, which I think balanced the game out quite well. So without further ado, here's the final project. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.